Welcome to the Writer Groupie Podcast. I'm Kim Smith, the writing guru, bringing you discussions, insights, and insider details on planning, producing, promoting, and profiting as a writer. This is a podcast by writers for writers. You can find out more about Writer Groupie at www.kimsmithauthor.com. And here's the next episode of Writer Groupie. Okay, and here we are tonight, another edition of Writer Groupie, and my guest tonight is Kat and Margaret King, the King Twins. Hey, y'all. Hello. I'm so excited to have you guys back on Writer Groupie, and I'm excited because, you know, I haven't had very many, well, maybe not any, but y'all, children's authors. So y'all have been so busy doing children's books and stuff, and I want to hear all about it. Well, back in April, we came out with our first book, and it was about the characters Maggie and Kathy, nine-year-old identical twins, who camp out in the backyard with another friend, and the boys are in one camp that are 10 years old, and we're in the, the girls are in the other camp. And so it's the girls against the boys, <laughs> and revenge is oh so sweet because the boys are nothing but aggravating all night long and the girls figure out a way to get back at them so it's cute let me show you the the front cover of it the backyard camp out yay what a great There's cover a house and a scavenger hunt and <laughs> all kind of cute things in it and, and then how- Oh, go ahead. Yeah, Monday, we got we released Boo. It's also the same set of twins, Kathy and Maggie, who and the haunted house is still involved in this one, and so is the cemetery on Halloween night. Fine. And it's the same aggravating boys, <laughs> but revenge again. Girls rock. <laughs> so. We've been, and it's on the Accelerated Reader Program as well. Awesome. We're excited now. In um, August, we came out with our first preschool book called Kicking and Screaming. Wow. I didn't know about that one. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's how we went when we got shot for the first time to go to school. And so we just put it into a book all of its own for preschoolers. And... Um, it's a cute book. Of course, we fictionalized all three of these. So, uh, Kicking and Screaming is in our original Y'all Twins book, yeah. but we made it kid friendly to come out nice. And because, you know, getting your shots can be a scary thing. Sure, and absolutely. So all three of the books are really, really cute. Well, the, the artwork is fabulous, and I'm just I'm thrilled to death that y'all have been busy since I saw you in what, March? I know we have put out three book children's books mm-hmm. since then, and we're already working t- on our fourth one, which will be called The Bully. Oh, boy. And so that's going to come out in the spring. We're just formulating the ideas on it. So that's We've got awesome. a, a CD that's re- been released um, of the King Twin Rappers. <laughs> and we've got another CD coming out just for children. Oh, my gosh. You guys, if you're just listening to the podcast, you're going to have to go to the YouTube channel so that you can see these covers and the cover for this CD. These ladies are the most inventive women I've ever met. And they are fantastic. You guys just inspire me. Well, you know, um, our, we, we both have children, but... They're grown and they're gone, and we just figure, well, we don't have anybody to embarrass anymore. <laughs> so we just go out and do whatever we want to do, and it's fun and it's funny, and we have a wonderful time doing it. I tell you what we're doing now is, much as anything, is called laughter in the workplace. And people are hiring us to come to their seminars and retreats to do a seminar on laughter in the workplace. I might want to have to get you for that one for my job. (laughs) We just laughed the entire 30 or 45 minutes we're there, and so were they. And so we just kind of stress how important laughter is in your life, whether you're at work or at home. 
And it's a lot of fun. It really is. Man, I'm saying, we probably, you know. As Mari said, we probably entertain for about 30 minutes, but about half of that time is doing different kind of raps for them so that they, you know, we can make them laugh and enjoy it. I remember we have one for you tonight. We have one for you tonight called Acts 238. <laughs> and we're going to do it for you right now. Okay, go ahead. Yay. Okay, here's our spin. All right, hit it. Here's our spin on a funny joke about some old sinful bloke. Coming home from church last Wednesday night, a set of old twins opened the door and turned on the light. And to their surprise, an intruder stood inside. Holding their treasures in his hands, they knew instantly his ultimate plans. Acts! 238 was their command. They said it with such conviction that the thief froze in place. Not a muscle did he move. As the twins called the police. As he cuffed the thief, the cop wanted to know. Why did you just stand there? Why didn't you go? Those old ladies are harmless. Just quoting you scripture. You could have escaped without a capture. Scripture, shouted the thief. Shock on his face. He knew he'd been had. Surrendering in disgrace. Can't believe I got caught. I took the bait. I thought those old ladies had an axe and 238. <laughs> That's a wrap. Love y'all. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Just love it. You guys cute? are phenomenal. <laughs> uh, divine intervention on that one. Yeah. I love that. That is too funny. Oh, my goodness. Only you two could do that and make me laugh. <laughs> I know. We, we have about 30 or 40 original raps now. And we have raps now for children and have a children's CD rap out with four or five uh, songs on it just for the kids. Mm -hmm. And one is an anti-bullying rap, which is really big now to promote anti-bullying. So, what you know, we're trying calls, to stay with I'm it. I'm just saying. I tell you, we go into the schools and they look at us and they think, oh, we got old women coming to see us today. Two old people coming in to entertain us. And then we get dressed up in our capes, you know, and our... our Crowns and all the girls love the crowns. Of course. And then we rap and we have more fun. And when we leave, we're just so cool. We <laughs> yeah. come in as old women and we leave as pe two people who are so, so cool. cool. They're talking they about you for weeks, you know. Yeah. And, and they want to have their picture made with of us. Course. And, you know, we just have a lot, a lot of fun with the with the kids. Well, I know I so enjoyed having to... my picture taken with you. I want another one. Yeah. <laughs> well, Good. We've done that before, hadn't we? We have. We did it after the Author Rodeo Roundup back last year. Well, That's actually what this I remember. year. remember. Y'all going to go to that next year? We hope to. Well, I'm going to yeah, be there. I'm sure I they'll hope invite you us. Are. It's yeah. local. We got to go. I hope they'll invite us. Oh, that was I'm fun. Sure. Um, she does Maggie a, does a great does, job. She does a great job with that, you mm, know. She does. Two years into it, and this will be the third year. It should be really big. I think mm. so. I so think it I takes really, a few years for something like that to, to kind of pick up and run. But I think once, you know, once it gets established, it starts becoming an annual thing, and then people start looking for it. And when you get people looking for it, now, then you know you've made it. So I expect yeah. for it to be quite a lot better than it was last year. Not better. It was very good, but I mean bigger. I expect Maggie a lot more people so to discover much into it. it. She mm -hmm. did. She did a great job. I, we love you, Maggie. I know it. Love, love yeah. Maggie. Love Maggie. Uh, and she's an inspiration, too. This woman runs like nobody's business. She's always out doing marathons and stuff. And I'm like, she should be <laughs> about as big Facebook around as a peep. I know. She posts her runs on Facebook, and I'm thinking, oh, my gosh. And I tell you somebody else that I love to watch on Facebook, and that's Arthur Avant. Yes. He is a lot of fun, too. His kids love yeah. him. He's a cop. He's a rapper. He's busy. He just does He's cool. everything. He is cool. Yeah. We have a great, great community of writers right here in the state of Mississippi. And I think it's, it's untapped talent a lot of times because 
Well, you know, before Author Rodeo Roundup, I didn't know who y'all were. I didn't know who Arthur was or Maggie or any of the people that I met. And I just think it's such a tremendous community. Patricia Neely Dorsey? Yes. I think we met her over there. Yes. And I hope to get her on this podcast. Patricia, if you're listening, you really need to get with me to get on this podcast. I didn't get a chance to to interview her um, earlier this year because, you know, she was going to Jackson to be honored as the poet, uh, not poet laureate, but something like that, whatever it was for our state. Uh, and she's just she, fantastic. She deserved it, too. She, she truly was, she did. She's very deserving. She's a great she, ambassador for the state of Mississippi. She does. She spreads she, goodwill like nobody's business. <laughs> she, she does. does. <laughs> so if y'all are listening by podcast or watching by video, remember in the spring, Author Rodeo Roundup. It's held down in Senatobia. The last couple of years, it's been on the campus of Northwest Junior College, or community college. They don't call them junior colleges anymore. Uh, and I expect for it to be in the same, you know, vicinity this year. But f- for certain, follow my events page because I'll always put all that stuff up come around the first of the year. It's a good venue. It is a very good venue. It was a lot of fun. I expect that I'll try and do another talk if if I'm allowed. <laughs> I know. That's what's fun is if you and, – and you have fun speakers too. That's what's so great about it. And you have publishers and all kinds of people there that – that you want and need to meet if you are an inspiring author. True. So uh, it's a great program, and venue is great as well. It is, and we get the opportunity to sign our books and talk to readers, and it's just a, um, a reader-author get-together that I've really enjoyed. And uh, last year was my first – I keep saying last year. It's still 2015. This yeah. year, this spring <laughs> – was my very first author rodeo roundup and i will definitely have that on my events calendar from year to year because it was a good it was a good event i enjoyed it it was so what's coming up next for you ladies now you've got your cd out and you've got these books out and you said you had book number four coming out i know y'all have had a tremendous event schedule this year i've seen y'all on facebook posting pictures of you know, you were here and you were there and you were somewhere else all in the same week. I'm like, do they ever sleep? <laughs> we took two weeks and we went to the Exchange Club National Convention in Columbus, Ohio. And then we left there and we traveled for a week to Notre Dame and came back through New York and ended up in Twinsburg, Ohio. And we decided to do our talent again, which is rapping. And when we got through rapping, we, there were three dot com or online magazines there to interview us and one of them was people magazine oh wow and so we thought when people magazine came out we weren't in it so we figured we made the The cutting floor yeah the cutting floor (laughs) and then cat's daughter said y'all are on people.com oh so we went to people.com and typed in twinsburg and there, there we, we were. were. Son of we a gun. We were the first of about 20, 24 sets of twins that they took pictures and interviewed with. Mm-hmm. So we can say we've been mm-hmm. on People Magazine or in People Magazine, at least on People.com, which is wonderful thing. Sure. And I mean, so I would use it for credentials. That's a huge highlight for us this year. Sure. Oh, that's and exciting. We're going to, uh, we're going to Fayetteville, North Carolina in two weeks, and we've got four or five engagements there, and uh, one's at a, a local elementary school, and then ladies' groups and women's groups, and so it's excited just to have that opportunity as well, and I don't know, it just seems like things are opening up for us, and we'd love to go to the next level of entertainment. And once we entertain, we can usually sell our books. Of so course. that's kind of what it's all about. I have we, to we ask get... you guys, because you do go to so many events over the course of a year, how do you get those bookings? How do you get those events? Authors that might be listening or watching this program are going to want to know, I want to do that. How did they do that? Well, one usually leads to another. When we go, let's say we, we went to this seminar last week, and out of that one seminar, we had two other people say, 
you know, I really want you to come speak to our group when we have our convention. And so one, one usually when you go to one and speak, it'll lead to two or three more. But uh, that's really how we get it going. It is, and we just I just pick up the phone and I call libraries. Can we come to your library? Can we do your children's program? And, um, you know, that just kind of perpetuates itself, and we just keep going with it and uh, going into schools as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, someone says to us, well, my mom teaches at this school. I want you all to come in over there. So it just one kind of runs into the next one that runs into the mm -hmm. next one so we've been really lucky but the the speaking engagements like Kat said that once we do one of those we'll have three people come up and say I want you for our yeah. our company mm -hmm. so uh, you just have to get out there you have to be able to put yourself out mm -hmm. there and be entertaining which I am I don't know you know <laughs> so together we feed off each other and we just have the best time Kim, we just really we do. usually can finish each other's sentences. She didn't. She didn't get into that one very good. <laughs> we can usually finish each other's sentences. So. We do that a lot, and um, you know, just really and truly, you have to put yourself out there and be entertaining. And if you're willing to do that, people will have you come mm -hmm. talk in a heartbeat. Right. So, do you make ever someone laugh? Do you ever work from a format? I mean, like, think to your first event. Did you go with a format and say, okay, we're going to do a children's program for this library or whatever? And then after you got finished, you collaborated and said, you know, there's some parts of that that worked for me and some parts of that that didn't. And mm -hmm. what can we change to make it better? And so the next time that you were Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we do that. Every, every, yeah. Everywhere we go, we analyze what what route what worked, worked what worked what didn't work i don't really think we ought to do that one again didn't get the laughter that we wanted or we didn't deliver it correctly mm -hmm. or whatever so yeah we do that every time we go somewhere mm -hmm. you you have to try get, to make it better and yeah. and the feedback from the audience is what's important to us and so um when they tell us oh my gosh we just laughed till i was crying i mean you know we knew we did it right so and usually we come home on such a high, I bet. such a natural high that we're just soaring in the sky, you know, just because we know it was a success. Yeah. And that's that's from the school rooms that we go to. We, you know, we leave on a high there because the kids love it. Yeah. Uh, to the seminars we go to. And <laughs> so we just have a wonderful time no matter where we go. That's true. We well, do. And we feed off each other. That's what's so mm -hmm. great. I'm considering developing courses or online workshops for certain things. And I would, you know, I think I could learn something from you guys insofar as it's great to educate, but you got to entertain too. They got to know that you're right. real. You know what I'm saying? You're not some, you know, wooden dummy up there teaching. You know what I'm saying? And so. Absolutely. If y'all ever decide you want to teach writers how to entertain in front of a room full of people, I would love to be a part of that. <laughs> oh, well, we'd love to be a part of that as well. Yeah, y'all yeah, need to start. We would love to do that. Y'all need to start the teaching. The thing about us is I, I don't think I could do it myself. And I think that's the problem a lot of authors have is they have to do it by themselves. We have each other. Yeah. And it's so much easier. I don't know that I could do it by myself. I know she couldn't. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> we can do it together, and it comes off really, good. really, really, really good. So. Well, you have a winning well, yeah, combination. Yeah, we'll be glad to do that. Would love to. Yeah, I mean, I would, I would love it too. Y'all decide to develop some kind of a workshop on, you know, teaching writers how to be entertaining in front of a room full of people. Because I am developing my professional speaking gigs. You know, I mean, I'm doing, I've done, oh, uh, think it was seven and four i've done about 11 panels this year i've been on 11 panels as a you know a pro author you know talking about the uh, art of writing and, and the editing publishing marketing all all the different facets and so i feel i feel a lot more comfortable being in front of a group of people now and answering questions in fact one of my last 
panels at the con we went to in Louisville, Kentucky, I ended up being the only panelist. <laughs> so I was literally telling everybody in that panel about blogging. It was Blogging 101, and I was teaching people how to blog, literally. And so that was pretty interesting. I had I had a lot of fun with that because I had a rapt audience. They were really listening to me. And that you yeah. do feed off of that. When people are really getting what you're saying and their questions are intelligent and, you know, they feel like they're informed and they come to you afterwards and they say, thank you for that, I needed to hear that, or, and I learned something and whatever, you really do feed off of that. Yeah, and you have to get the feedback. And Kat and I found that we, if we can, we practice in front of a mirror. And <laughs> I'm looking at her and she's looking at me. And so I think people, if they will see what their delivery is like in front of a mirror, you can always improve it that and, way. And change if you need to. And she'll right. tell me straight up, you really didn't say that right. You need to do it this way. And so we, we're pretty good with each other as far as being constructive critical. criticism. Well, you know, <laughs> and that's, and, the and way that's you a good, have to take it, you know. That's a good thing to remember about collaborating. A lot of people collaborate with other authors, and you have to be able to uh, communicate what you like and what you don't like and what you think someone's done that affects what you're doing, you know, so that the two together mesh well and create a full-fledged story. And, you know, obviously y'all are not writing That's a story true. with what you do, but mm -hmm. you, you sort of are. I mean, you know, when you're up there doing your rapping and whatever, mm -hmm. it is kind of telling a story. And the two of it you, is. you know, go ahead. Yeah, it is. And, and um, you just have to... You have to have the right delivery at the right time, and the only way you can do that is, is to watch yourself in the mirror, and that's just so important, I think. But to get that feedback, man, if everybody's coming up saying, y'all did great, we just laughed till our cheeks hurt, and you know, that's what we like to hear, and we keep our routine pretty much the same. Because when we did it for the Chamber of Commerce in Oxford, this young lady said, oh, you have to do it for Northeast Electric for me, and I want the exact same thing that you did. <laughs> I said, okay, we can do that. And so, um, that well, you've covered all the utility the companies. come up with something new. And so, it, but we loved it. I think that, Margaret and I, we love writing books. Of course, we love selling books. We love going into schools. But I think that the, the one thing we love more than anything is entertaining and making others laugh. And I think that's where our inner soul really comes to light. I want to give you an update on Josephine as well. You oh, know, our wonderful. Josephine came out last August, and I think last time we talked, it was about Josephine. It was. And um, she's just turned 75, and she's just is, uh, doing just great. And we still have our... Um, hopes and dreams of selling enough books to um, build our house and we have a movie production company in Hollywood that is interested in the rights to our Josephine. Oh and they my gosh. like it so much. She's from Arkansas and she likes it so much. She said, get me the screenplay, tell me who you want to play the parts and who you want to direct it. Wow. And so we're just so hoping that before the end of the year, we'll have all this information mm -hmm. to her and that Josephine will be made into a movie in the next year or two. So that's an update on Josephine. That's awesome. Is... Just for the benefit of viewers and listeners who have not seen the prior YouTube video or listened to the prior podcast, tell us one more time who Josephine is and a little bit of the story. I'm going to let Kat do that, and I'm going to go get the book real quick. Okay, great. Josephine, uh, Josephine was our first African-American friend that we ever had in 1957. Margaret and I were nine years old. Josephine was 16. And it was a pre-civil rights era where in, in the South it was separate but equal in schools and in other part uh, forms in, in your life. But we soon found out from Josephine that it was separate all right, but it was not equal. And the things that 
two little white girls could do at nine years old that Josephine couldn't do. The front cover of the book shows Josephine walking behind us up the sidewalk. Why? Because she couldn't walk beside us. She would get in trouble. And she said, she said, I can't walk with you girls because if I do, I will get in trouble. And I'm not getting in trouble because of you two rascals. <laughs> and so it, the, it, the, the book is funny, but it has so many um, beautiful uh, scenes in it where we learn the differences in her life and our life. And I guess the most important thing that we learned from Josephine was respect. That one person has for another regardless of skin color. And, you know, I think that's something that, that we learned early on in life. You've heard the, the phrase, pay it forward. Well, Josephine paid forward to us back in 1957. So many things, one being respect, that with the sale of this book, we hope to, um, we would really love to be able to build her a house from the proceeds of the book. Because she, she would, she needs one. That is awesome. You just guys to mention are our, amazing. Just to mention our first two books, um, then we'll get them all in here. There you go. Question everybody ask us. Y'all Yo, twins. twins. <laughs> That's what people ask us. <laughs> then it's, which is which? They make such a fuss. So this is our wrapping outfit, <laughs> and we um, that's all six of our books, and we have two CDs out now. I can't believe Nashville called us to come do a, C a CD. You know, most people would give their right arm to go to Nashville exactly. and record, and they can actually sing. Now, well, Nashville I kind of like y'all singing. <laughs> and we can't carry a tune, but uh, we can actually rap. The funny part is... We got into the studio to do our raps, and they put some music behind us. And Margaret and I said, whoa, whoa, stop. We can't concentrate on the words because of the music was distracting us. So he said, okay, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll record you, and then I'll put the music behind you when, you, when we finish recording you. The funny thing is, we, is all we can do to remember the words to 30 or 40 raps. Sure. And so um, we can't concentrate on the words and then music is thrown in there. So um, he was very kind to us and said, well, let me just work on it this way. And it really worked out and it, it's cute, right? It's, it's cute. cute CD. And so after it was done, after he dubbed in the music in the background or whatever, you listened to it and you liked it? Yeah, he did a good he job. He did a great job. Great. Awesome. That is wonderful. Because I'll, we'll, we'll send you one of them. I would love it. Oh, how fabulous. I would love it. I would we'll listen to it in CD. my car turned up really loud. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, you do that and you just pass it along. They're funny. I mean, they just really are. They're cute. They're all original and we enjoy writing them as easy memorizing them is quite um a challenge sometimes but we get it yeah we practice them over and over until we do get it so we're perfectionist you guys are amazing bottom line is we're having a ball yes you know what? we are and i think that's the most important thing if i can leave aspiring authors out there with any advice from me for y'all or from y'all or for me let me just say this if you ain't having fun don't do it it really should be fun. You know, it it's like you, you do it for fun. And if it quits being fun, then it's time to quit. That's the way I see it. Yeah, you need to stop and do something else. Yeah. It has to be fun. And uh, that's what we're all about now is having fun and giving back to our community and to the uh, Josephine and the people that we love. So mm -hmm. oh, well, y'all are. that's fantastic. what we're all about now. I am so grateful for having y'all on my show, not once but twice. Y'all are going to be famous celebrities with a movie and CDs and books, and y'all are just going to be somebody special that gets paid a lot of money one day. Maybe in our own eyes. And no, I believe that. And I'm going to be so lucky. 
for us. We just want it for Josephine. So that's what we're working on. And well, I'm telling you, if anybody listening to this show wants to donate to the cause to buy Josephine a house, you can go and buy the books, you can go and buy the CDs, or you can just cut a check and send it to Margaret and Kat. They'd be grateful for it, and they'll do well with it. And they can go on our website, www.yalltwins.com, and uh, <laughs> order anything that uh, the books or the CDs. That's fabulous. So everything's on there. Well, you guys, thanks again for coming on tonight. And you know, Thank you're always you. welcome. When you get another wrap together you want to share with me, hey, I'm always here. <laughs> Oh, that sounds wonderful. We'll catch up with you hopefully the first of next year. How about that? Hey, that sounds great. I know great. you're a busy lady. No, I've got bookings on this podcast from now through January the 12th. Every oh, week God. I've got bookings. I'm just amazed. It has just suddenly taken off. It's gone to the moon, and I love it. That is such good news. I am so thrilled Congratulations. For you. Congratulations. You. It's, you know, it's... We hope we can catch up with you again in the first of the year. That'd well, be wonderful. Well, you know, I'm always online. I always see y'all bouncing here and there, and y'all see me. And so whenever you're ready, you just well, shoot me an email. Drop me a call. Yeah, or no, a private y'all got message. my number, call me. <laughs> okay. Will do, Kim. Thank you Thanks. so okay. much. Thank you, guys. Thank you for listening to this edition of Writer Groupies. For booking information, show notes, and more, visit KimSmithAuthor.com.